Once upon a time, there were three little pigs living in the forest. One day, while they were playing the game of cat and mouse, the eldest pig slipped and fell while running fast. Ouch! He noticed that there were tiny colorful balls on the floor and asked, what are these? When the pigs looked around for a while, they saw a huge machine with colored balls inside. The middle pig turned the handle of the machine to understand how it worked. Yellow, green, and blue balls fell on the floor. The little pig took one in his hand and said, Mmm, it smells like candy, and put it in his mouth. He chewed and chewed and finally cried out with joy. These are fruit gummies! Yuppie! <laughs> They all started chewing colorful gummies and blowing bubbles. The little pig saw the red gumball in the machine. Oh, is this strawberry or cherry flavored? He started turning the handle of the machine quickly. Just as the red gummy was about to fall into his palm, it jumped out and rolled into the forest all of a sudden. So the little pig started to chase it. He was bending down to the ground and looking around with the branches when a claw caught his hand from among the leaves. And that was the big bad wolf's paw. Ah! Help! The wolf! The little pig immediately ran to his brothers. All three hid behind the machine in fear. The bad wolf came to the garden and turned up his nose when he saw the huge machine because he didn't like toys at all. Come here, piggies, otherwise I'll huff and puff and break your machine, he shouted to the pigs. The little pig replied, you can't break it. The wolf took a deep breath and huffed and puffed. The moment he puffed, the machine fell to the ground and broke. All the gummies were scattered on the floor. Ugh, what are these vile things? They are ours, not yours, said the middle pig to the wolf. Oh yeah, they're mine now, said the stubborn wolf. You can't eat them. Oh yeah? Watch me now. The wolf threw all the gummies into his mouth. While he was chewing, he was saying, But those are not melting. Come on, blow it now and see how you ruin everything, shouted the middle pig. I can blow, so what? said the wolf and blew with all his might. The wolf blew more and more and the gummy in his mouth turned into a giant balloon. So much so that the wolf took off and flew up in the sky and disappeared. <laughs> this clever idea of the pigs saved them from being eaten by the wolf. And this is how the grumpy bad wolf paid the price for his stubbornness. How will I get down now? The three little pigs are camping. Once upon a time, in the loveliest part of the forest, a mother pig and her three little baby pigs were living happily. One day, the little pig, Gurky, the middle piggy, Torky, and the oldest piggy, Porky, told their mother that they wanted to go camping. Mom, all our friends went on summer vacation. There's no one left to play with. If you let us, we want to camp by the lake. The mother pig could not turn down this request of her kids. This is a good idea, my kids. Of course you can camp. But be sure to choose the right place to camp and make sure your tents are solid, okay? <laughs> hooray, hooray, hooray! The next day, the piggies left for camp. After walking on the forest road for a while, a wolf with sharp teeth and angry eyes followed them. 
<laughs> Here is an amazing meal that will keep me fed tomorrow morning. <laughs> but the pig brothers didn't even notice the wolf following them. Gurky, Torky, and Porky finally arrived at the shore of the lake, and they found a nice place to camp there. First, the youngest piggy, Gurky, decided to make his tent near a tree. He quickly gathered up the large leaves to build his little tent. And before you could say Piggly Wiggly, he was done. The oldest piggy, Porky, came up to his youngest brother and took a look at his tent. Your tent is beautiful, Gurky, but do you think this tent is sturdy? Yeah, of course it is sturdy, my brother. The middle piggy, Torky, decided to make his tent from reeds. To do this, he gathered the reeds on the ground and quickly connected them together and finished his tent faster than you could say Piggly Wiggly. But when the oldest piggy, Porky, came to his middle brother and saw the tent made of reeds, he warned his brother. Brother, your tent is beautiful, but will these reeds protect you from danger? Look, I chose the tallest reeds. My tent will never be damaged. Since the two little piggies finished their tents so quickly, they started to play and have fun, which may have been their reason for building tents so quickly. The scary-looking wolf carefully watched them secretly. While his little brothers played, Porky started to make his own tent out of thick tree branches. He worked a lot until almost evening, and when he was finished, he had a strong, secure tent that would protect him from dangers. Torky and Gurky were very impressed when they saw their brother's tent. Your tent is very nice, my brother, but you spent all that time working and didn't play with us. When the evening came and the sun went down, the three little piggies decided to go to the carrot party in the forest. Of course, the sneaky wolf followed them. The three little pigs found a lot of rabbits at the party. And that makes sense, because it was a carrot party. Oh, it looks like such a fun party. I want to taste all the carrots. <laughs> the piggies mingled with the rabbits and had fun for hours. Have fun, piggies. Tomorrow, I too will have a lot of fun when I feast on you. <laughs> As the party ended, the three pig brothers realized how tired they were and returned to their little campsite. And the big bad wolf waited for oh. them all night. Oh. 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 Waking up on his second day in the camp, Gurky heard a voice from outside. Come out, you little piggy, or else, with just one blow, I will destroy your tent. My tent is very strong. You can't do anything. Okay, then. One, two, three. <gasps> the wolf took a deep breath, so big, that he blew away all the leaves of the little piggy's tent, and it fell to pieces. Gurky barely escaped with his life and immediately ran to his brother Torky's tent. Soon after, the wolf arrived in front of the reed tent made by the middle piggy. I know you're both in there. Come out, you little piggies, or else I will destroy your tent. My tent will never break down. Okay, then. One, two, three. Once again, the wolf took a deep breath so big that he blew away all the reeds of the piggy's reed tent and it fell to pieces. Gurky and Torky barely escaped with their lives. They immediately ran to their big brother Porky's tent. 
Brother, help us. The wolf destroyed our tents. And now he's coming here. Then we must take action immediately. Come with me. Working together, Porky, Torky, and Gurky dug a deep hole in front of the tent. Then they got out using the ladder in the pit. And they covered it with an earthen cloth. And then they entered the tent that Porky made of sturdy branches. They finished just in time because the hungry wolf came right over to Porky's tent. Come out, you little piggies, or else, with just one mighty blow, I will destroy your tent. Don't waste your time, bad wolf. You can't damage this tent. Let's see then. One, two, three. (gasps) The wolf blew with all his might, but nothing happened to the tent. The wolf came a step closer and blew again, but to no avail. The tent didn't even shake. The wolf took one step closer to the tent, and this time, no. He fell into the pit dug by the piggies. Seeing that the wolf had fallen, the piggies came out of the tent and crossed the edge of the pit in front of them. Then, these lovely pig brothers quickly returned to their mother to tell her what had happened. Mom, you were right. We should have been more careful in the camp. First, we should check the environment before camping and whatever happens. We should set up the tents firmly. (laughs) Yes, yes. The mother pig hugged her children tightly as they returned home. And all throughout the summer break, they played with each other and had fun. A mother pig and her three cubs were living in a tiny cottage deep in the forest. One day, the mother pig called her cubs. How about making pizza together today? Woohoo! Yeah! Yeah! But some ingredients are missing. Corn, onion, and some tomatoes. Me and my brothers will go get the missing ingredients, Mommy. Don't worry, we'll be right back. So the three little pigs went out excitedly. They decided to part ways, as each of them would get different ingredients. One went to the cornfield, one to the onion, and the other to the tomato field. Meanwhile, the big bad wolf was hunting in the forest to feed his hungry stomach. Whoa! This smell? Pigs! Yes, I smell pigs! Seeing the little pig Gurky just ahead, the wolf followed him. When the wolf saw the pig heading towards the onion field, he reached the field just before him and hid among the large onions. The little pig Gurky arrived at the onion field a little later. He smelled them one by one to distinguish between sweet and bitter ones. Just as he was about to pick another onion, he touched the ear of the wolf. Hello, Piggy! Ah! Wolf! Help! Hush! Calm down, champ. Tell me, what are you doing in the onion field? Gurky told the wolf that he was picking onions for pizza. When the wolf smelt the onion in Gurky's hand, his eyes watered. He said that this onion is bitter and that he can give the sweetest onion to him if he comes to his house. After thinking for a while, Gurky accepted the wolf's offer. They disappeared together. It was noon. The middle pig, Torky, has arrived in the cornfield. However, since the corn in the field exceeded his height, he could not reach the corn cob. Torky stacked several stones on top of each other and climbed on top of it. 
He was about to take one of the corn cobs, but he lost his balance and fell into the wolf slop. Ah, help! Wolf! The wolf gently placed Torky on the ground and told him not to be afraid. What are you doing here, Piggy? You almost got hurt? I'm picking corn for a pizza. It doesn't look so, but he. <laughs> Already this morning, I gathered the most beautiful corn cobs with my tall stature. Come with me and I'll give them to you. The middle pig was overjoyed at the wolf's benevolence. Well, that would be really good. I'm not tall enough to pick corn. Torky disappeared with the wolf. It was now almost evening. Porky, the eldest pig, was picking tomatoes in a big field. Some of them smelled so good that he immediately swallowed them. Porky's stomach was filled with more tomatoes than his basket. While he was happily wandering around the field, his head suddenly hit a wooden stick and he fell to the ground. When he looked up, he saw the big bad wolf disguised as a scarecrow. Ah! Help! This is the wolf! Hey, Piggy, calm down. I won't hurt you. No, I don't believe you. You are the big bad wolf. Porky asked the wolf why he was standing in the tomato field shaped like a scarecrow. When the wolf said that he's helping the farmers in his spare time like this, the pig understood the good intentions of the wolf and relaxed a little. Why are you here, little pig? Well, I was picking tomatoes for pizza. Pizza? I love it! But just tomatoes are not enough. You also need cheese, mushrooms, peppers, and most importantly... Yeah? The most important thing is the oven, piggy! Oven! If you don't have a good oven, all these ingredients will go to waste! After thinking for a while, the eldest pig got the wolf right. Because the oven in their house was too small and was not getting hot enough. Come on, eat from my oven's pizza. You won't be able to get enough of it. Porky accepted the wolf's offer and they went away together. When the sun went down and the mom came out, the mother pig was anxiously waiting for her cubs to return home. Meanwhile, the cries of the pig brothers were rising from the wolf's den. Help! 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 It turned out that the evil wolf had trapped all the pig brothers in a cage inside the den in order to deceive them and devour them. Then he arranged the woods one by one in the stove oven and set a huge fire. I forgot to tell you, piggies! My favorite pizza is pizza with pork! <laughs> the pig brothers hugged each other in fear. Just as the wolf was adding some more wood to the oven to make the fire bigger, Porky, the eldest pig, noticed the open sack of flour on the side. He reached out with difficulty, took a large handful of flour, and divided it into the hands of his brothers. Just when the bad wolf was about to open the cage door and throw the little pigs into the oven, they all threw the flour in their palms at the wolf. <coughs> My eye! Where are you? I cannot see! Come here quickly! The wolf could not see anything because of the flour smeared on his face. Taking this opportunity, Torky, the middle pig, quickly pushed the wolf into the cage. And the little pig, Gurky, locked the wolf inside. So what were you saying? Pizza with pork, huh? Now sit here with an empty stomach, so maybe you can come to your senses. And we can go eat our delicious pizza. Come on, brothers. No, you can't go. You can't just leave me here. Finally, the pig brothers gathered all the ingredients and arrived at their home. The mother pig was very happy to see her children. Ah, oh, 
You just want to bring some onions, corn, and tomatoes. Where were you, kids? I was so worried. The pigs told their mothers what had happened to them one by one. Later, together, they made pizzas that smelled great and were very tasty. From that day on, Gurky, Torky, and Porky promised their mother that they would never accept anything from strangers without informing her. On the other hand, the Big Bad Wolf had to make do with the smell of pizza coming from far away. The Lion, the Mouse, and the Sleepy Bear Once upon a time, in a lush forest, there lived a small mouse. There was a huge bear who lived in a neighboring cave. The big bear, who had hibernated months ago, was still sleeping and snoring loudly. The little mouse went to him one day to wake the bear up because he could not sleep all winter due to the bear's noisy snoring. Mr. Bear! Hey, Mr. Bear! Hey! Summer has come! You can wake up any time now! However, the bear still did not wake up. The little mouse came to the bear this time with a bugle. He blew vigorously into the bugle. But the bear continued to sleep. While the little mouse was wandering sleeplessly in the forest, he met several animal friends. What happened, to little mouse? Why are you sad? Ugh, don't ask, guys. All winter I could not sleep because of the bear snoring, and he still won't wake up. Hmm, maybe the lion can help you. What? Why would I go talk to him? Because the lion roars so loud that everyone jumps up the instant they hear his loud voice. Though the little mouse was a little scared by the thought, he went to the lion, the king of the forest, to request his assistance. The lion was sleeping in front of his cave. The little mouse was terrified when he saw the mighty beast, so he decided to give up his plan and go back home. But when he accidentally stepped on a branch in front of him, the big cat woke up and a tiny trembling voice reached his ears. Uh, what's that noise? What are you doing in front of my cave? Um, well, the king of the forest, sorry to wake you up. Well, I, um, came to ask for your help. You're not even big enough to be considered snack size, little mouse. Why should I help you? Dear fearsome lion, you have to wake up my neighbor, the big bear, who won't wake up from hibernation. Nothing I do seems to wake him. Since I am small, I have a little voice. But one roar from you can solve everything. I don't have time to spend for a tiny, little, useless mouse like you. I am king of the forest. The lion walked away without helping the mouse. He went to a corner where no one could see him. He leaned against a tree and started to itch like crazy. Oh. The lion was so itchy that he didn't want anyone to see him like this because he was the king of the forest. The little mouse, on the other hand, was coming home sadly and heard wheezing from the depths of the forest. He went to where the voice came from, and he saw the lion. Moreover, the lion was itching himself non-stop and looking rather silly in the process. The mouse immediately approached the lion. When the lion saw him, he stopped itching, but it was clear he was still in pain and discomfort due to the itch. Mr. Lion, what happened to you? I don't know, Mouse. I don't know. I can't stop itching myself. Oh, 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 oh. You haven't seen or heard anything, Mouse. Are we clear? The mouse carefully fixed his tiny eyes on the lion and saw a bunch of tiny fleas jumping in his fur. The mouse understood 
why the mighty cat was itching so much. Aw, you have fleas. Let me help you. Uh, how can you help me? You're just a little mouse. Leave me alone. Oh. The little mouse bravely jumped on him, ignoring the lion's rude comments. Uh, what are you doing? Get off of me! The mouse started to crawl through the thick, scruffy fur and throw out all the fleas. But this made the lion's situation even worse. He started itching himself with his paws. The lion could not bear the itch and leaned his back against the tree. This time he started to rub right and left. Was almost crushed. Uh, I can't stop. I can't stop. The more you run over me, the more I itch. Get off, mouse. The lion ran to a nearby lake. He quickly jumped into the water. The mouse on his back was nearly drowned. Mr. Lion, get out of the water right away or I'll drown. The lion came out of the lake, but then proceeded to shake himself dry. He was shaking his body so hard and so fast that the mouse barely was able to hang on to that thoughtless lion. I've almost got the itch taken care of, Mr. Lion. Just a little bit more to the left. The lion finally stopped himself. The mouse threw out the last few fleas that remained on the lion. How do you feel now? Well, it's like my itching is gone. Because I have cleaned all the fleas for you, sir. The lion was very embarrassed with how rude he was. When you asked for help, I looked down on you, mouse. But you still did everything in your power to save me from this difficult situation. Thank you. You're welcome, Mr. Lion. Come on, hop on my back, and I'll take you home. When the little mouse and the big lion arrived at the mouse's home, they heard loud snoring sounds flooding out of the big bear's cave. Huh? What's that noise? They then entered the cave. Ah, you were right, mouse. Summer has come. The big bear is still sleeping. The lion, the king of the forest, took a deep breath and roared so powerfully right into the ears of the big bear that the stone floor of his cave shook. Thanks to this powerful roar, the bear finally woke up and ran out of the cave. Huh? What happened? Is there something wrong? What happened? Did the sun come out? Is it summer? Where is it? While all the forest animals laughed at the big silly bear. <laughs> <laughs> Little Mouse was also very happy that the snoring was finally over. One day, the little piggy Gurky was sitting sadly in the garden. His older brother Porky came to him. What's wrong, Gurky? Why are you sad? I'm so bored, brother. I can't find anything to do. Ugh. You know, I actually have an idea. What is it? Playing in the mud? I'm tired of that too. Oh no, I went to a place called City when I was as young as you. There was a huge amusement park with lights all over it. Maybe we can go there? At that moment, the little pigs heard a crack. They were frightened at first, but continued to talk excitedly. Hooray! Amusement park! Hearing Gurky's joy, his other brother Torky too joined them immediately. At that moment, they heard another crack. They did not notice the wolf listening to them through the bushes. Hmm, going to the city and having fun at the amusement park. Let me catch you on the way and show you what it's like to have fun. 
<laughs> but the road is quite far and dangerous. We'll be careful and protect ourselves on the way. Please, let's go. So the three little pigs set off for the city. And the treacherous wolf immediately followed them. After a long journey in the forest, the three little pigs were very tired. My feet hurt from walking! Let's get some rest now! The little pigs, with the help of their older brother, set up a tent made of leaves and tree branches. They went inside and slept soundly. The wolf, on the other hand, was wandering somewhere nearby with his nose smelling strong. Where are these piggies? A few hours later, the little pig was very hungry. He left the tent to look for food without waking his brothers. He saw an apple tree just ahead. Just as he was about to reach out and pick three apples, the wolf suddenly appeared in front of him. Is that what you wanted, little pig? Help! Wolf! The wolf was just about to catch Gurky, but the little pig got out of the wolf's arms and ran to his brothers. Brothers, wake up now! The wolf is here! The wolf is outside! The three little pigs hugged each other in fear inside the tent. Open the door and let me in, piggies, or I'll huff and puff and blow your tent in. You can't do anything. Our tent is solid. Upon this word, the wolf blew, puffed, and destroyed the tent. And the three little pigs were stunned. Ah, ha, ha. How are you going to get away now? The middle pig, Torky, showed the wolf the back of the tree. Oh no! Is that a big bear over there? What? Huh? Bear? Where is it? When the wolf got distracted, the little pigs rushed away. After a while, they came across a small abandoned farm. Look, my brothers! It's a farm! Come on, let's hide there! The little pigs hid in a pile of straw one by one. But little pig Gurky did not notice that his hat was left on the haystack. The treacherous wolf, who was very hungry, was looking for little pigs everywhere. When he saw the farm, he thought he might find something to eat there. Just as he was about to enter, he saw a pile of straw on the side and a tiny hat on it. Here, the piggies must be in this haystack. I found you! <laughs> While the pigs were waiting in silence, they heard a crackling again. Huh? Did the wolf find us? Shush! Let's be quiet! The treacherous wolf disguised as a farmer and came to the barn. Uh, it's so hard being old. I wish someone could help me carry those groceries to the farmhouse. The little pigs waited silently. And then we could have a nice feast. Look, that must be the farmer. If we help him, he will fill our stomachs. No, that could be the wolf. Let's not go out. So you didn't help the farmer, piggies? Then I'll huff and puff and blow the haystack in! The wolf took a deep breath, blew, and puffed. When the haystack fell apart, the pig brothers quickly fed. Come here! I'll eat you! The three little pigs who lost their way gradually reached the top of a mountain. There was a sneaky hyena in front of them. Wow! My food came to my feet! The big piggy Porky got in front of his brothers to protect them. Get away from us, hyena! Just then, the middle pig saw a vulture flying overhead. B -b brother Look! This is a 
capture. Because the little pigs were so far from home, the wild animals saw them as prey. The three little pigs were terrified, not knowing how to get rid of them. While the hyena was wandering around to see which one to devour first, he suddenly started running towards Gurki. That's when the wolf appeared. He jumped in front of the hyena. Let go of them! The wolf had been following the pigs since the farm. This time, however, he took the hyena against him to protect them. With his frightening claws, he drove the hyena away in one swift. But the danger did not end here. Wolf, watch out! The vulture will attack! The wolf howled with his long and frightening voice as the vulture spread his wings and flew swiftly towards the pig. Ow! The vulture was so afraid of the wolf's howl that he flew away from the pigs and disappeared. Fearing the vulture, the pigs were about to fall off the cliff. No! We're falling! Help! The wolf came quickly and grabbed the pig's hand, and he pulled them all up in one stroke with his strong arms. Thank you, wolf! Why are you helping us? Cause only I can eat you, piggies! <laughs> Go straight down to the right of that stone. Your house is there. But this time, be careful. The pigs rescued by the wolf. After walking for a long time in the direction, he said, finally arrived at their house. They promised that they would never cross dangerous roads without their elders again. The next day, there was a knock. Piggies, open the door and let me in, or I'll huff and puff and blow your house in. You know you can't destroy it, man. Don't you believe? Then one, two, three. <gasps> After that day, the three little pigs and the treacherous wolf, who understood the importance of being together against danger, continued their lives happily. Ow! That morning, Goldilocks was very, very excited because she was going to ride the bike her mother bought her as a gift for the first time. Be careful, girl. Don't go too far. When Goldilocks got on her bike, she first wobbled a little, then started pedaling like she was flying. She was riding her bike so fast that when she slowed down for a moment and looked around, she realized that she was in a place she had never known. Huh? Where am I? This is a part of the forest I've never been to before. As Goldilocks realized that she had moved away from home, she was a little alarmed and decided to return. While she was riding her bike at full speed, she heard a pop. And she was thrown to one side and her bike to the other side of the road. Ow! My leg hurts! Oh! <laughs> Goldilocks was weeping, both because she got lost and because her tiger had burst. <laughs> but Goldilocks wasn't the only one crying. She straightened up to see who was crying in the forest besides herself. She dragged her bike with her and walked towards where the noise came from. Not far away, she saw a little pig sobbing. Piggy? Huh? What? Whoa! Who are you? Don't be afraid. I'm Goldilocks. Why are you crying, little piggy? <laughs> my skateboard! I lost my skateboard! <laughs> Hush! Don't cry! Look, my bike's tire burst too. I cried a lot, but that didn't help me fix my wheel. 
When little pig Gorky saw the flat tire, he forgot about his skateboard and calmed down a bit. What a beautiful bike this is! It is beautiful, but I've lost my way home too. I have to be back before evening. The little pig forgot about his skateboard for a while when he felt sorry for Goldilocks. He told her that he knew every path in the forest very well and would help her. And maybe he could find his skateboard while walking. So Goldilocks and Gurky set off. However, after a while, a giant wolf appeared in front of them. It's Wolf! Aw, don't be afraid, Piggy. Maybe he's lost something too. Hello, Wolf. The wolf walked slowly towards them, hungrily. Yes, I lost my food. <sighs> but I think I found it now. I wonder, which one of you should I stomach first? Realizing the wolf's malice, Goldilocks was terrified, but stepped forward to protect the little pig. At this time, hunters roam the forest and hunt wolves. They'll catch you before you can harm us. The wolf took two steps back when he heard what Goldilocks had said. Hunters? <laughs> oh, I'm so scared. <laughs> The wolf jumped on them with a quick move. The little pig managed to get away and escape. However, Goldilocks was trapped in the wolf's claws. Ah! Help! Help me! The wolf caught me! The wolf ran to his lair with Goldilocks in his arms. First I'll eat you up, then I'll go back and I'll catch that piggy! Rawr! Although Gurky went after the wolf, he lost track of the wolf because he wasn't fast enough. Then he went back to his house to ask his brothers for help. On the other hand, the greedy wolf had already tied Goldilocks to the stone in his lair. All right, little girl, you wait here. I'll go catch the piggy too and have a nice feast tonight. As the wolf was about to come out of his lair, Goldilocks spotted the skateboard in the corner of the cave. Huh? This skateboard is Pig Gurky's skateboard. So it was you who stole it! The wolf was very angry with Goldilocks, who called him a thief. He took the skateboard, got on it, and had fun riding it left and right. This is my skateboard now! I'm even going to scratch my name on it with my claws now! <laughs> Meanwhile, the little pig Gurky and his brothers finally arrived near the lair. But since the wolf was so busy with skateboarding, he did not notice them. Gurky quietly approached Goldilocks. Hey, Piggy! Did you come to save me? Yeah, be quiet, Goldilocks. Gurky quickly untied Goldilocks. Wolf turned around with the skateboard in his arms and made eye contact with Goldilocks and Gurky. What? Is the piggy stealing my food? My skateboard! This is my skateboard! Here, in the hands of the wolf! The wolf threw the skateboard aside to jump on Goldilocks and the little pig. And while he was running towards them, Gurky's brother came in. They threw the small thorny chestnuts in their pockets towards the wolf. When the chestnuts stung at his feet, the wolf stumbled and fell to the ground. Ow! What are these? They hurt me! Come here, pigs. Now I'll catch you! However, this did not deter him, and he got up again. He was about to jump on the pig brothers with the thorny chestnuts clinging to him when Gurky grabbed the skateboard and quickly escaped from the cave, taking Goldilocks and his brothers behind him. We made it! Hey! Hooray! Hooray! Yeah! The greedy wolf stared at the retreating pigs and Goldilocks. Ugh. Phew! The wolf realized too late that stealing things that don't belong to him is a bad thing. 
When they got rid of the wolf and arrived at the pig's house, a surprise was waiting for Goldilocks. Come on, take the cover off. When Goldilocks lifted the cover, she saw her bike, which had already been repaired. And she was very happy. Oh, you fixed my wheel. Thank you, piggies. Gurky got on his skateboard, and Goldilocks got on her bike, and they headed home. From that day on, the little piggy and Goldilocks' friendship lasted a lifetime. <laughs>